and welcome to another episode of the Meet the Translator podcast. My name's Dot and today I'm joined by Teresa Sousa for a chat about SEO translation. Teresa will explain what SEO is and where translation comes into it, as well as what her work looks like as an SEO translator. And of course, she'll have plenty of tips for us all too. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hi Teresa, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. It's really nice to have you here today. Do you want to do a little introduction, tell everyone a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do and what your journey to becoming an SEO translator looks like? Hi. Hi Dot, thank you so much for inviting me. It's so exciting. It's actually my first podcast that I'm taking part in, yeah. (laughs) It's so nice. Yeah, so let me just um, introduce myself. I'm, I've been in the translation industry for quite a while, actually, since 2004. So it's approaching in on 20 years now. Um, I actually started as a project manager, a translation project manager for a company in back in Portugal, mm-hmm. where I'm from. I'm from the north part of, Porto, of Portugal, so Porto. So yeah, I worked as a project manager for about 10 years and then I decided I wanted to go freelance, uh, which was one of the greatest decisions (laughs) in my life. And at the beginning, I'm sure like uh, many, many freelance translators, I was kind of a generalist, like taking on whatever uh, companies would send me and whatever. But Very quickly, I started to realize that I prefer to work on something that required a little bit more of creativity. Mm -hmm. So this was when I started, I heard about trans creation and all that, and I started getting really into that. And I realized I I really liked it, so I thought I'd kind of specialize on that. Kind of at the same time, I was working a lot, translating a lot for digital marketing, newsletters, landing pages, all that. So I I got really interested in that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I decided to do was to create a website for myself when I started to work as a, a freelance translator. And it was quite an investment at the time, and it was quite a um, painful proce- process, actually, to decide what to write, what not to write. I mean, I'm sure you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. everybody can, can relate a little bit to that. So um, since it was such a huge investment, I wanted to get some return out of it. So I didn't want it to be just like a digital business card with my contacts and whatever. I wanted it to generate business, to attract clients. So this is when I first learned about um, SEO and I started to get really interested in it. From Actually, it started from a, a business owner's uh, perspective to, to get results from my own uh, website. <laughs> so I did a lot. Uh, I had a, the, um, the help of my web developer at the time, the person who created my website. He was advising me a lot. Um, we did a lot of trial and error stuff. I, I tried a lot of different stuff. But yeah, I got some nice results. I, I, I am actually, until today, in the first, uh, the first page of uh, Google results for some, for some search queries, which is quite, I mean, <laughs> it's quite nice. And yeah, so, and lately I started to see this uh, raise in demand for SEO from translation companies and from even direct clients who were asking these SEO-related uh, services. And Mm -hmm. since I was already interested, this is kind of, um, I mean, I don't want to go too long on the first first question already, but this was kind of what got me into SEO. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's go into like, what is SEO? So what what does it stand for, first of all, and what can you kind of explain what it actually is? Yeah, so SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization, and I like to put it in very simple, in a very simple way. It's basically building on, or on our case, translating uh, websites that are going to please Google. <laughs> when I say Google, of course, Google is not the only search engine, but it is the, well, it is the biggest in the world. And, and at an European level, uh, it's, uh, it's quite popular. So I tend to, um, to talk a lot about Google. 
And search mm-hmm. engine optimization is basically optimize the content, written content and all types of content. But from a translator's perspective, it's to optimize our content in a way that search engines uh, are going to find it, actually. Because if you have a website, you want it to be found. You want people to go there. You want to get visitors. A lot mm-hmm. of visitors... Maybe not a lot of visitors, maybe the right visitors. Maybe that's more important, actually. So, yeah, it's pretty much about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where does translation come into it? So you've obviously said how it can be helpful for us as translators with our own websites. Where does translation come into it with regards to doing helping clients with it? Yeah, like I said, this is kind of a recent trend that people started to um, involve translators into this whole process. Because if you think of it, you're much younger than I am, obviously, but we've been we've been translating websites for ages. I mean, ever since there was internet, people started um, pretty much translating websites. Mm-hmm. And we were doing it for so many years, like in a blind way. Uh, we just got the content, the written content in um, Word files or HTML files or whatever, and we were just translating it. We're using a CAD tool. I mean, we could do our best to make it appealing, to make it like nice, naturally sounding. Of course, this this is part of a good translation. But we weren't aware of the whole process behind the creation of the original uh, website. Mm -hmm. So I think companies and uh, website owners in in general just started realizing that they are going to involve a translator at some time in the process. Because if you are starting a brand and you want to expand it, you are creating your website. If you are already thinking about internationalization, you need to think that you will involve um, a translator. So if this translator knows a little bit and understands the, um, the principles of SEO and what went behind creating the the source content this is nice i mean this is this is um, a nice added value for for the client also when we start talking about seo we talk a lot about keywords and keywords mm-hmm. are basically words so if anyone knows about words it's linguists <laughs> So, yeah, sometimes it's nice to have a linguist perspective and not just a digital marketing expert that is very focused on numbers and um, metrics and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then comes the, the linguistic touch, which is so, so, so much appreciated. Yeah. So I guess this is where we come in and, and we can really add some, some value. Mm-hmm. So you've got the keywords. So when you do a translation, I guess you get the you get the keywords and you get the text, right? Or yeah, well, uh, ideally, if we are working on a new website, we should start by knowing uh, the keywords that were being targeted with the um, original uh, text. So what was behind the what was the goal of the original content? And then the first task would be to localize these keywords to our market. And this is also how translators can help because more than linguists, more than translators, we are cultural advisors most of the times. We are specialized experts in our market, in our target market. For Mm -hmm. me, for example, I can only translate into European Portuguese. Um, If someone asks me something for Brazil, I won't be able to provide a good service because I'm not I'm not up to date with the market with the consumers. It's uh, it's very different. So yeah, ideally we would be um, given this kind of keywords that went into the original text and find our way to localize them and then weave them into the target text. This is the ideal workflow. Mm-hmm. Okay, and how how do you sort of decide how to localize them? Because it's not just the same as like having a list of words that aren't keywords, right? Like you can't just translate it. It's like a whole (laughs) other thing, isn't it? Yeah, well, keyword localization is a quite a popular service nowadays and a lot of companies are asking it. And it's uh, well, it's a lot more than just, uh, sometimes the client will send us a a spreadsheet or with uh, 10 keywords to localize. And this is, hardly uh, localizing 10 words. I mean, it can be very time consuming, it can be very challenging because we need to really understand the product, understand the service 
and then put ourselves on the consumer's shoes and try to understand which terms people would type into the, to the search engine if they are looking for this service or this product. So we need to be really creative. We need to try a lot, make a lot of mistakes, get very frustrated. <laughs> And then look for the better uh, option, but it can be very challenging, very time-consuming, yeah. Mm -hmm. For you, what sort of um, projects do you mostly work on and like what kind of, with what kind of clients do you usually work with? At the moment, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of divided between localization work and SEO training, actually between mm -hmm. supporting my students and uh, preparing for customized workshops and all that. But in terms of localization, I do not have a lot of clients at the time, which is actually good. <laughs> It's actually a good thing. I, I have clients that require, uh, require a creative approach. Um, mm -hmm. And most of them are in the lifestyle field. So um, interior design, um, and all, all of those uh, nice uh, areas, fashion, um, sportswear, and all that. So I'm working a lot with um, digital marketing content, so translating a lot of um, landing pages, blog articles, uh, website copy. So this is the kind of, of work I'm doing at, at the moment. My source languages are, which is something I'm really happy about, because for a long time I only worked with English as a source language, and now I have the chance to work with uh, German, French, and Spanish uh, into mm -hmm. European Portuguese, which is a nice, a nice mix. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, nice selection of languages you've got there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, would you say most of your clients are direct clients? Then, do you work directly with the the companies whose websites need translating or or online content? Yes, at the moment, yes. I have, uh, I think, one translation agency at the moment. I'm quite um, selective um, <laughs> nowadays with my clients. Um, I don't want to go very off topic, but uh, last year I took a, a very uh, an extended summer break, as I like to call it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it was not a sick leave per se, but I was very, very tired, very exhausted, which I believe every, anyone has experienced this um, somewhere mm -hmm. in their lives. And I got different responses from my clients at the time. Uh, so empathy started being very important for me when I select um, when I select a client. Good communication is also very very important. Uh, I mean, um, fair and timely payments are just basic. <laughs> Comes without saying. But it's it's also interesting for me to work if the client is aligned with my values. Um, of mm -hmm. course, the creative part of, of the work. I don't do any technical translation at the moment. So the creative side is very important for me also. Yeah, but empathy is, is important. I just like to leave mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, I love that because it's not always something that we think of straight away when we think about what clients we want to work with. Yeah. It's not always the first thing that comes to mind. So that's a good yeah. <laughs> a good one um, it took me a long time to get <laughs> to get here <laughs> But, yeah. yeah I mean I guess it's it's often only when something comes up that you really need to see evidence of it that you would think about it maybe but yeah so we've talked a bit about what SEO is how does it actually benefit clients to have SEO translation yeah Well, like I said, making a creating a website is a huge investment. Of course, for mm -hmm. us as, as freelancers, it can be even bigger because we are sole traders. I mean, um, it can be hard. But even for a big company, it's a huge investment. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to spend the money in creating a multi-language website, you might, might as well put a little bit extra effort and get a little bit um, more return on your investment. So if you are just creating a website or if you put a lot of SEO um, effort into your original content, but then you don't ask for this effort to be put into the target text, you're missing out. You're leaving money on the table, let's put it like this. If you had a strategy for your original uh, website in English or in German or whatever, and now you're translating it into another language, make sure that the translator understands what went behind 
the creation? What's your strategy? What's your goals? Who is your ideal customer? This is so important. If we have all that information, we can create a better, a better translation. And once you start learning about SEO, you will never translate the same way again. It's like uh, incredible. It's like you, you look at the text with a, with a different um, perspective. It's, mm -hmm. it's never really the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sounds like it's, it's a, quite a good skill then for any kind of translator to learn. Um, yeah, yeah. Even if you are just um, working on website localization or even for your own strategy, I would say, for we as translators, as freelancers, we pretty much all have like a kind of social media strategy, let's call it like this, because it's where we find out um, where our clients are. So mm -hmm. it's always a nice skill to, yeah, to have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how is it, I know you said that you've been in the localization industry for nearly 20 years. I mean, and I know you've not been doing SEO for the whole, for the whole 20 years, but how, how has SEO translation changed since you first kind of heard about it or started doing oh, yeah. it? Well, it's always changing, actually. This is a very difficult topic to keep up, keep up to date with um, mm -hmm. because you need to keep reading about it and uh, trying to keep um, up to date with all the new trends and all that. It's almost impossible. But, well, if you just like the topic and you're genuinely interested in it, you have to keep reading about it. Um, but one thing I, I noticed is that it has become a lot more focused on the human being behind the screen instead mm -hmm. of the search um, engines, the machines, the bots, all that. I think search engines like whatever users like because we are the ones who, who are teaching the machine. Uh, if we click on, the, on a given result, it's because we saw something that we liked. So this will give the information to the search engine that this is a nice content. So I think SEO has shifted a lot into focusing on the reader, focusing on the human being that is actually reading. And I think it makes perfect sense. And for us as translators, this is gold because we can write uh, for human beings instead of writing to, to please the machines, let's put it like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that because someone might think that like search engine optimization is just about like trying to stick all the right words in to like get google to notice it whatever but like i guess if you're trying to google's trying to make it so that people humans want to find it so yeah yeah sounds quite nice actually <laughs> <laughs> um so i know you said that it's constantly changing how how do you actually keep up with all the changes yeah, well, I have the help, the help of my um, web developer. Uh, he's like a digital marketing expert, so it's his job to keep up to date with all this. <laughs> so he keeps pushing me to try harder and harder and to um, change um, some things and try new things. And so this is quite nice to have someone to help you with, with that. Um, but if you genuinely like the topic, it's quite easy because there's a lot of resources, um, a lot of blogs that you can uh, follow around. I particularly like Neil Patel from uh, Uber Suggest, but there are a couple of uh, newsletters that you can um, subscribe to and you just get uh, a lot of news about it. Um, also about user user experience, UX writing, which is very a very interesting topic uh, as mm -hmm. well. So yeah, basically, if you have a true interest in the topic, it's it's very different. It's very easy to to find resources um, about it, but you just keep you just need to keep reading <laughs> about the mm -hmm. topic. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess it's probably maybe even one of the easiest things to find information on because. The, the people who are writing the information are SEO experts, so their yeah. content will be coming up as soon exactly. as you try and search it. It should be. I mean, it will be a very bad sign yeah. if you could not find information about SEO. Yeah, yeah. But the point is, it can be too much. There, there is actually too much information, I think. Uh, so this, this was my main struggle when I wanted to learn about SEO, but I wanted to apply it to translation because there is just so much stuff. Uh, and you need to filter what, what really is important for you because if not, it's just like um, 
a rabbit hole, a never-ending uh, topic. So, yeah, but it, it is fairly easy to, to find it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, for, for yourself as a translator and for, like, any other translators, even if they're specialised in different areas that aren't anything to do with websites or anything like that, how can having the SEO knowledge actually help you as a translator as well outside of doing the SEO translation work? Yeah, even if you are not providing or thinking about providing um, SEO-related language services, as a translator, if you're a freelancer, you can always benefit uh, from SEO to your own business. If mm -hmm. you are building um, a website, if I had known what I know today... Uh, <laughs> When I first created my website, it would have saved me a lot of pain and suffering and a lot of time, actually. Um, so if not to provide a new service, I think it's very important to at least have a general idea of how it works. Because if not, you are just sometimes you are wasting time and effort creating a website and it just doesn't get you the results that you would like to. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, and even as consumers, it's interesting sometimes to understand how, how the machine works, why we are seeing these results, how are they manipulating us <laughs> into, into basically buying things and, um, and, well, yeah, manipulating is a strong word, but it's interesting to, to have this perspective as, as consumers and definitely as um, business owners, entrepreneurs, like I mean, we all um, are as, as freelance uh, professionals. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's quite interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. And is it useful for things other than, other than having a website? Would you say it's useful for thing, places like LinkedIn or Instagram or like any kind of other online places? Or is it mainly just for websites? No, no, definitely. If you can also be found... If you don't have a website, I mean, your uh, social media profiles are your digital home, basically. If you don't have a website, but you have a very strong LinkedIn profile, you can definitely use it for your search engine results, I mean, to be found by your clients. And here, the, the use of keywords, the, the skills about uh, optimizing content, um, writing for the reader with the focus on the reader. All this is our SEO skills and they are quite mm -hmm. important even if you don't have a website, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you find that your SEO knowledge also helps you research things quicker and faster? Do you find like you know you know better like what things to type in if you're, if you're looking online for a certain thing? Or As a consumer. Has that really changed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, well... I, yeah, it's like I say, you never you never see things the same way <laughs> once you start <laughs> learning about search engines. It's true. It's not that I know better how to search for something, but I just find it interesting how I behave as a consumer. Sometimes I like to analyze my behavior <laughs> or even my husband is searching for something I'm like, hmm, interesting. Why did you use that keyword? <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's definitely uh, um, a topic that interests me and amuses me, like personally. <laughs> so I find it quite interesting to to analyze consumer behavior and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. It may, I mean, it makes sense. You want to be interested in your specialization, otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> I do think that's the main thing I always say to people if they're not sure what to specialize in. I'm like, just do whatever you find interesting or you yeah, enjoy because, because otherwise yeah. you're not going to want to keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. And it's so much easier to to do research when when you like the topic and when you are a consumer of, of the product or service because you know yourself, you know how you are going to look for mm -hmm. it and you know how the how you want the brand to, to speak to you. So mm -hmm. you just put yourself into the user's shoes much more easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. So do you have any SEO tips for, for translators, whether they're whatever they specialize in? Yeah, well, if you are thinking about using it for your own website, I would say, first of all, don't get obsessed. I see this all the time. Um, I have, I would say, 50% of my SEO students, they come because they want to learn about SEO to use it on their own websites. And mm -hmm. the other half comes because they want to provide SEO as a service. 
And what happens very often is that people get um, too much into SEO. <laughs> they get very obsessed and they want, to, they want to measure the results and they want results very fast. Um, mm -hmm. So this is another advice. Be very patient. It might take a while to get some, some results. And don't get too hung up on, um, on SEO. Focus on the reader. Find out about yourself. This is the... This is really crucial. Um, it took me a long time to understand who I was as a professional, what I, I like to do, who do I like to work with, which services do make me, I mean, happy just to, to work on them, mm -hmm. and which kind of projects I like. So the sooner you get all this clear, like a clear vision of... What's your value proposition? What sets you apart? I know this is very difficult. <laughs> Sometimes it can be very, very hard to, but it is like, it's, it is the hard work that needs to be done. And once it's done, all the rest comes, comes uh, easier, um, comes easily. So yeah, learn about yourself, find your, find your own voice also, be authentic. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't try to be somebody else or don't think that what works for somebody else will work for you. This never works and people can see right through it. Mm -hmm. So if you're funny, just be funny. If you swear a lot, swear a lot. I mean, nobody cares. People just want to see you, your voice, be authentic. Think about your ideal client, your ideal reader and write for them. Remember, it, people are more and more important. Even the machines think... <laughs> very important <laughs> so if you please people you will ultimately please um, Google or search engines or the machines or whatever mm -hmm. so yeah this is very important but I, I also advise people to not get too hung up on um, SEO because oh no because now I have this keyword and I have to write it I have to write about it it's okay go easy on yourself if, especially for us as, as solopreneurs um, freelancers that we we wear so many hats in our day-to-day -day lives uh, go easy on yourself don't, don't get too too obsessed with uh, with SEO mm -hmm. good advice <laughs> so yeah so actually I well I contacted you because I um, I did your your SEO course mm -hmm. um, what was it SEO Become an SEO savvy translator. <laughs> Become an SEO savvy translator. That's the one. Exactly. I did it back in 2021. And I did a couple of SEO projects after that for, for, okay. um, for clients, which I think went quite well. I've actually not done a lot since then. Okay. Um, but I did, I did find it really interesting. But um, yeah, you've talked a bit about your students as well. Can you kind of talk a bit more about, about your course that you have and like how you can, what you can offer uh, to translators? Who yeah, sure. Well, I more. created the course because back in, I want to say 2019, 2018, 2019, I started to see this trend coming up where uh, translation companies were asking, can you translate this keyword list? Can you use these keywords in your translation? Uh, can you optimize this content to search engines? So these were SEO projects that were coming along. And e even though I was already very interested in SEO, I was already working a lot in digital marketing. I had my website. I, I had read a lot about SEO for my own website. I felt a bit lost and scared with these new projects because they are outside of our comfort zone as um, translators. It's kind of a new service that was emerging. And even the clients sometimes, they didn't know exactly what they were asking. So this was kind of a gray, <laughs> gray area for all mm -hmm. of us. Uh, but I saw these uh, requests coming along more and more often, and I could not find anything um, about it. I mean, I could find too much about the topic, uh, but, but not anything made for us translators. I would search like SEO training for translators, and and there were there were no results at the time. So I did a lot of uh, research. I did a lot of courses. Um, I pretty much spent all the pandemic. <laughs> Uh, learning about SEO, which was well, quite a nice way to, to spend the time. And I find it more and more comfortable to, to tackle these projects. And the results were very nice. The clients were happy. The feedback was great. So I was really happy with this, uh, with this new service that was coming along and how I was able to handle it. Mm -hmm. So 
then I thought, well, maybe some somebody needs to put this in, <laughs> in out there because if I felt lost, um, I'm sure a lot of um, other colleagues are feeling the same. So I'm just going to create something. And I, I started giving out some, some workshops at first for, for small groups of translators. And then I just decided to create um, an online course um, that is called Become an SEO Savvy Translator. It's a very big <laughs> title. <laughs> and this is an online course, which means uh, people can enroll and they can, it's fully self-paced. So once you enroll, you have access to the contents uh, forever. So you can take the classes whenever you like. And you ha it's 10 modules. So with everything that I wish I knew <laughs> when I got my first request. So it's everything I know about SEO, actually, everything I learned. Um, mm -hmm. So it's 10 models. You have a lot of videos of myself explaining everything, explaining how the tools work. You have practical examples of uh, work requests from real uh, client requests, uh, how you can go about them. Um, we have practical exercises, quizzes, all that You were my student, so maybe you can help me. I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, at, yeah, you have my full support um, during the course. You can always um, write something on a chat or email me and ask me anything about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm always available to, to help. Uh, at the end, you can also download um, a workbook with all the contents on the, um, on the course that you can keep forever. And you have a certificate of completion that people really like and, and always share on social media. It's quite nice. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, up until now, I, I have um, 300 uh, plus more than 300 students, which is quite mm. nice. And uh, the yeah. feedback is really great. I think people really, um, students always like the course and it's It's very nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I like I liked the fact that it was like a full course. Like I didn't have to go online and search for loads of things and try and do all the research mm -hmm. myself because I find it can get quite overwhelming because you're like, what do I read? And as you said, there's so much information on it. It was really nice to see like, oh, there's a course like specifically for yeah. me as a translator <laughs> and it has like all the information I need like and I can actually like it's not all just loads of reading as well. Like you've got a mix of things with your videos and then like the, the practical things you can try out as well. So like mm -hmm. it was, it was a really nice way to get into it. And then after, after I did it and I shared my certificate on LinkedIn, yeah. that's when I think that's always a good thing to do. And I always encourage people to share like when sure. they achieve something or something like that, because it meant that I could then like, that's how I then got, my seo jobs nice from clients because people were like oh seo <laughs> like <That's> nice no <laughs> yeah you know like people see it and then and then that's how you kind of get those jobs so it's um yeah i'm so yeah, happy I to mean, hear I, that <laughs> i would certainly recommend the course <laughs> oh thank you so much no it's really it was a lot of fun it was a lot of work creating it Uh, but it was a lot of fun and it's really rewarding to be um, to see people being happy with it and get, getting actually new clients and more uh, work from it or implementing stuff on their website and getting results from that's just super uh, nice for me to hear. <laughs> So do you have any final bits of advice for anyone who's thinking that they want to start specializing in SEO translation? Yeah, well, you can enroll. I don't like to really sell <laughs> my course. <laughs> But it's true that it's you a can good, That's a good start. <laughs> you can enroll. It's a good place to get started. Yeah, yeah, actually. But just make sure you like the topic. It's really important because if you don't like it, it's just going to be... Uh, I imagine that if you don't like it, it's really boring. <laughs> so make sure you like the topic. Don't just get uh, swept in by, oh, SEO translation is like the new trend. I need to get in on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's true. It's a, it's, a, it's a new trend. I'm kind of new, but there are other, there are other things. It's kind of future-proof if anything can be future proof in our profession because we are always being threatened about um, artificial intelligence and all the machines that come to take over <laughs> come to replace us uh, so anything that needs a little bit of a human touch is always a nice way to follow it's always a nice path uh, 
uh, for us because um, hardly machines will will be able to to replace that kind of human touch that uh, uh, online users are craving. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a it's a nice uh, path, but there are there are other things you can specialize. So if you don't like it, I mean, just don't 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 force it. Uh, if you do like it, if you think it's interesting, yeah, there is my course. But there are um, some other resources now. Finally, if you type um, SEO training <laughs> for translators, now there are there are other resources. So you can uh, definitely. It is good that people have um, have lots of choices. To, mm -hmm. to decide on what's better. My course has a kind of, uh, I forgot to say that, it has a free preview. So you mm -hmm. can easily um, sign up and just have a look at some classes. And if you don't like it, you don't need to, to enroll. But there are mm -hmm. other resources now, luckily. So you can easily have a look. And um, well, I mean, it's, it's really necessary to learn about it, actually. Take some time to, to learn about it. Uh, but make sure you like it. That's more important. Mm -hmm. the most important mm -hmm. I'd say I feel like it is one of those topics that's like just good to know as well in general like like for me obviously I did go did your course and I did some work on it and I did I did enjoy it and I found it interesting but then like I've kind of gone more down the audiovisual route and now I mostly just sure. do like movies and tv shows and I think like that's probably that's probably more my thing but I'm still grateful that I've got the kind of SEO knowledge in the back of my head because yeah. like it was useful for those projects at the time and I mean I still I need to update my website it's been, it's been a while <laughs> we all my need website needs an update. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when I get to it I know that that knowledge is going to be really helpful <laughs> yeah yeah sure no and don't feel bad we all have this thing on the back of our heads like I need to do more marketing I need to update my mm -hmm. website I need blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> but I mean go easy on yourself um, it's hard you know it's hard being, <laughs> being a freelancer <laughs> it's so hard so just take it easy it's okay I mean the website can wait I know I'm not saying it's not important. It is important. I mean, we, you need to to take the time to work on your marketing, and you you know that better than I do, I'm sure. But everybody has that. I need to update my website. <laughs> it's always, it's it's always true, a, but you're gonna the get there when you get there. It's gonna be fine. Yeah. It's just for me. It's one of those things that like something else always comes up that I need to prioritize. And I know. Like, I know. I'll get. I'll get there eventually. So anyway, um, yeah. Did you have any any anything else that you wanted to say on the podcast? No, not really. Just thank you so much for inviting me. This was so nice. I really like it. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming. It's been it's been really nice having you here. Um, if anyone does have any um, more questions for you, or they want to reach out, or they want to start doing your course or whatever, what's the best way to find you online and get in touch with you? Yeah, so I'm I'm fairly active on uh, LinkedIn and Instagram. You can search for Tags Language Solutions, which is my um, brand name. You can have a look on my website. There's all the. <laughs> it needs to be updated. <laughs> <laughs> it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress, but it is. It's true. It's always a mess, my website, but there is a lot of information about my services and there's information about my course. And uh, there's um, a form, a message form to get in touch with me if, um, if you need. If not, I'm around on LinkedIn and Instagram. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank um, you, it's Dot. Been, it's been really lovely to chat with you. <laughs> you too. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode of the Meet the Translator podcast. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. Thanks again to Teresa for joining me. Make sure to check out the show notes for useful resources. And as always, if you have any comments or questions about the podcast, send an email to meetthetranslator at gmail.com.